South Africa, you do not have a name. Things that go unnamed wander through the world, not knowing where to look or where to go. In Africa, names are asked for, prayed for. Blood is spilled in the name of naming. Warm red liquid seeping into dust fills the dead with life. Our names are the dead speaking. South Africa, can you hear the song of the dead? The rush of blood spilling daily in your breast. We kill each other for your nameless name's sake, to appease the hungry ghosts who keep asking, where do we look? Where do we go? The dead know more of living than we, the living dead. The way what is unspoken awaits what is said. The untold tales of walking corpses who see plenty but go unfed. The silent history shouting at the present like electric fences around king-sized beds. South Africa, your aspirations asphyxiate me. I die each day just to live free. Bonded to the lie that I could own any land or that you could ever build a fence that could hold all of me. The dead have us by the collar. The dead squeeze themselves into our dreams. You think that you belong to yourself. The dead are using your eyes to see. We dress our wounds with costumes like designer aids and branded poverty. Tourists gorge their tears on raw sewage, then drive 10 minutes to sip chai tea. Our corpses are clothed in contradictions. We fashion fictions to feed free market afflictions. We are dancing to a dead rhythm while the dead wait for us to see ourselves in them. South Africa, the dead do not die. They wait for you to stop being afraid, to hear the voices that know where to go and what to do, to sit with these silences and give them names. Johannesburg, I will never forget that a black and white audience screamed nationalization. <laughs> they closed up to you, running through this theater like this. It's like this. It takes just 26 letters to create a universe. The world is dismantled and then reassembled through the lens of a pen and verse. I have lost myself in books and then found myself in words, living in a prism of imagination. The prison, prison of, of silence. silence would be far worse. I've walked through the lives of individuals whose eyes I've never known. I've been to cities and villages and countrysides whose skies to me have never been shown. It was in this solitary cell that my greatest gift was honed. I saw that my mind was just a shell and its abyss simply a hole. And the hell of a heaving, heavy heart is still my friend. Every story has its place. And history never ends. The writer is a visionary, an architect. A godchild at play on a canvas of memories. She lies naked between the covers, her own lover, her own worst enemy. Navigating between these extremes, she is both the judge and the judged, the vile, despised, and attacked, the unashamedly beloved, the ever listening friend who will tell your business when you're not in sight. She pulls the mind's commotion out of stillness in the cavern of the night. And South Africa is a fractured mirror, a paradox of schizophrenic selves who don't talk to one another. 
who coexist together but don't live with each other, who fear each other, who revere each other, who loathe and pretend and try to blend in with each other. And this is the time when you can become the greatest substance of your dreams unless you live in a shack and don't speak English and don't know what this poem means. Tell me how it's possible for people who walk on gold to not know how to read. Tell me how publishers who will never taste our tongues can comprehend the words that our people need because we have never been scared of stories. The ones who uttered the very first the ones who hand them to our children, calling the rivers of their self-worth, the ones who will write a narrative in the air, but who dare not call the ear a page, the ones who rhyme without pens and perform without a stage. I don't have all the answers. I'm just a colonized African with a funny American accent who breaks down the Queen's English until Sesotho understands it. Still, I'm compelled to comprehend those who don't inhabit my language. I wonder if trials and translations could help them to traverse my landscape. South Africa is an old-fashioned mutt who knows how to sing and knows even better how to cuss, who knows how to pray when she's about to run out of luck, who knows how to laugh really hard when the tears have run her into a rut, who knows that race is a farce because when the lights are off, everybody's fucked. <laughs> and when the welts and wounds demand healing salve, words are just enough. Johannesburg, it has been a blessing and a privilege to share our words with you.